Good morning, everybody. It is my honor to be with you today. So I would like to thank the organizing committee and Mr. Balakakis for his invitation. In the next few minutes, I will present to you the response of Coca-Cola Hellenics to climate change, the consequences of climate change on our company because of its size and, of course, of the sector that we are active upon. And these changes might be very important. Coca-Cola Hellenic is one of the biggest bottling uh, beverages of the Coca-Cola company uh, globally. We are acting with three continents in 29 countries from Nigeria, Russia and other countries. We have 209 production lines and uh, 715 million consumers. We produce around 13 billion liters of beverage yearly. So if one thinks that uh, the basic, of course, um, product we use uh, for our beverages is water and of course that a uh, huge part of our products contain sugar and uh, sugar like uh, products then you can understand how important climate change can be for the availability and the quality of water and of course the um, crops. We are very glad to uh, found ourselves within the first five uh, companies of the Dow Jones uh, Index. And they, of course, uh, measure different things, the environmental impact of the company, the social uh, impact, and, uh, of course, uh, their impact on climate change. In order to stay in this position, we are, of course, committed to very uh, specific and very um, strict uh, goals for uh, development uh, until 2025. Our strategy for our uh, answer to the climate change is based on three pillars. The first one has to do with how we're going to reduce our impact and footprint, how we're going to contribute less to the climate change. We've also, we are committed to reduce the uh, carbon emissions uh, by 2040. We want to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions uh, to, by 20% until 2025. And we want to be able in uh, EU and Switzerland to use 100% uh, of total electricity in our plants in those uh, parts of the world from renewable and clean sources. That's something very important to us. Water is very important to us, and we want to reduce water uh, per liter of beverage. And apart from being a very important uh, source and product for us, it is used everywhere. For example, for cooling down our equipment or for um, sanitizing our bottles. There are, of course, a lot of actions that uh, we've taken and we are going to commit to in order to secure the availability of water in all the regions that we are active. Under the same pillar, we also aim towards zero waste. We want to have no uh, residues from our plants and our products. We aim towards 100% recyclable packages up until 2025. Right now, we have 99.9% recyclability. Then, up until 2030, we want to have 50 
50% recycled PET in every plastic uh, bottle that we produce. I'm talking about the PET uh, bottles for beverages and water. And we want in 2021 to reach 20% of our PET. That's what we've done in the past few the past year and we want to reach a hundred percent collection by 2025 uh, we will recover 75 percent of our primary packaging and by 2030 we want to recover 100 percent of our packaging that's why we are of course um, working together with very important actors of this industry for every bottle uh, of beverage that we, uh, of course, uh, bring to the market, we will have uh, recovered one bottle back. Right now, we are around 50% of this recovering, and that means for every bottle that we bring out to the market, we have uh, recycled half a bottle. There are a lot of programs that run under this first pillar that I explained to you. Um, the priority to different products has to do with the impact. A very basic part has to do with the packaging of our products and we have moved towards the reduction of the weight of our products. We have managed to reduce 27% uh, of the weight of PET uh, products, PET 10% reduction and class 15% uh, reduction of their net weight. The production of uh, aluminium cans are, of course, one of the most uh, energy consuming um, actions, and that's why we're moving uh, away from them. You have seen that in the market we're trying to uh, change uh, plastic um, film to uh, paper um, packaging. That's why we have uh, three plants that uh, turn plastic bottles to retain. That is uh, very important for um, the production of pulp. This uh, pulp is used for the production of raisin and other new bottles. We have three units, in one in Poland, one in Italy, that um, we, of course, uh, opened a few weeks before now, and another one in Romania. Now about our supply chain and the transportation of the um, raw materials and our um, goods. For the past few years, we have prioritized the um, purchasing of raw materials from the own country that we manufacture the goods. For example, uh, for a plant in Romania, we're trying to buy sugarcane from the, a local producer and not from a country abroad in order to reduce our footprint. The second pillar for our um, work against climate change has to do with the uh, quality of the raw materials. And, so, and I, would like, I would like to mention here the principles for sustainable agriculture that uh, we implement in the Hellenic Coca-Cola uh, bottling company. And this is a program that sets the expectations for suppliers and, of course, for farmers. And we want to be sure that uh, our 
products have been produced through a very qualitative uh, program. There are different, of course, um, sets of measures uh, that, uh, for example, protect the human rights, that uh, forbid the employment of children. They uh, of course, foresee the protection of civil societies and the um, earning of fair wages. There are very strict um, um, measures for animal health and welfare, and there are very strict um, rules for the environment and ecosystem, as well as the farm management systems. Under this PSA product, we can found different agricultural ingredients that we um, um, so get supplied. For example, uh, natural sweeteners, fruit juices, and other um, products like uh, coffee, tea, soybeans, and timber products. We are not working directly with the um, farmers themselves. We are working with the processors and other, uh, of course, communities and synergies that make sure that all of these uh, initiatives are um, respected. So we also gave tools to our producers that allows them to monitor the assessment and improve uh, all the time. We also share best practices among various suppliers and various countries. And at the same time, there are also financial motivations that will allow farmers to allow suppliers to come under the framework of this PSA program. Indicatively, some of the, the um, requirements of the program about environment and ecosystems, the uh, requirements to monitor the water quantity used in every stage in order to have the best possible management and reduce uh, waste. We try to monitor the quality of the water, but also how um, discharges from waste water are managed in order to uh, save water water in this area. Uh, there are also requirements uh, about the energy use. We want to reduce energy and our crops and our processing units to try and use renewable energy sources. There are requirements regarding the uh, waste management, of course. Regarding the use of land, we prohibit crops which are, in, uh, are cultivated in uh, previous forest areas, we want to protect forests. We do not accept products coming from crops that have expanded and harmed um, wetlands. And we have specific requirements about agrochemical uh, products. We have to be very careful uh, and its use should be justifiable. And we also have requirements about the, the uh, species and the varieties in order to have the best possible crop with the less, uh, less water and less energy used. We are really happy when it comes to the results of this program. There is a high, a high uh, commitment ratio, uh, not only from our farmers, but also from our processors. For 2022, we have reached 90% of our uh, primary uh, products to become from PSA certified units. And from 2025, we want every uh, thing that we use to be from such uh, units, and this program has brought about very good results. I have chosen the example of sugar from sugar cranes. The certification comes from Bonsuko, and we have seen that our certified meals only within a year of the implementation of this program, we have allowed to reduce uh, CO2 emissions more than 5%. 
percent, and we have managed under this program to increase the sugar for millions of tons by using millions of less uh, than less water, and the uh, yield of the crop of the sugar grain has been increased at a very big uh, percent, more than eight percent per uh, uh, land unit. And at the same time, our units uh, still have earnings, and they reinvest their earnings, their revenue to increase their uh, uh, increase the salaries of their people. In our certified mills, the salaries may reach 20% above uh, compared to uh, non-certified farms. And our third pillar uh, is related to our awareness raising and supporting uh, the local communities that we work with. We have a lot of environmental actions. People participate actively. We're talking about cleaning, about reforestation actions for uh, a lot of similar activities. We try to raise awareness and educate, and at the same time, we contribute towards um, having water supplies and good water quality. And the example that I have chosen is our uh, ac uh, action in for Legandros. For Legandros is at a high risk when it comes to water scarcity and we have invested in desalination units and we also collect uh, the rainwater when it rains in Polegandros. I would like to um, uh, thank you very much. This was our program and our strategy, uh, our response to climate change. Thank you very much for your attention and I will remain at your disposal for any kind of questions.